Hey guys, I'm a uh, different part of the city now. This is uh, Jia Din Park, which is like the largest park here in Vietnam. It goes like way back. Uh, so that's a cool little spot here. But just want to give you a little peek of where I'm at. I uh, wanted to talk about uh, this Bancor exchange that uh, recently has kind of come, come up on uh, DAP radar. Before I do that, I just want to go over my progress uh, that I've been kind of documenting with uh, the smart contracts. And so I'm going to give you guys uh, a little bit of insights on, on how those are doing. So uh, we've seen volume come into uh, Proof of Week hands as like basically the two other kind of major contracts and Poo and uh, Proof of Craig Grant have come down. So basically the volumes have have, have, have kind of returned to Proof of Week hands. I'm kind of seeing that as like uh, when we're looking at uh, at least this website uh, that's kind of going over the pricing, we've seen uh, people coming back in, at least buying back in a little bit. I'm kind of seeing, uh, looks like almost like the market's bottoming out here. So let me break this up. So it's been going down for quite a while. And uh, like well, that's pretty much kind of the trend that we've seen. I can't see if you guys can see this a little bit better. This is kind of this downward trend that we've seen for the last several days and uh, looks as though it is uh, almost bottomed out here at 6700 and so now we're kind of seeing it um, volumes return a little bit so that's kind of a, an encouraging sign that we might see you know a little bit of a, a bull run as volumes return back to uh, for weak hands and that's kind of what I'm anticipating the volumes overall have been pretty low and so like this is something that I'm starting to document um here in this spreadsheet so basically uh like this right here is a daily volume so the daily volumes come up proof of weak hands uh it's kind of dissipated from poo a lot of it seems as though like people are selling out of poo the contract values come down quite a bit uh and then not a whole lot in proof of craig grant i mean that one has really just uh, unfortunately it's kind of imploded uh you can see the balance the total balance so the balance has come up with proof of weak hands and it's really dissipated from the other two. You can see like these other two, ETH Phoenix and Locked In. These ones were two that like were kind of in the first wave of clones, I guess you could say. So uh, basically, you'd seen like uh, Proof of Week Hands kind of started um, in the scene, like kind of trying to come up with a working contract model, and then you you saw like you know a flurry of clones really come out, and that's when I kind of started getting interested and kind of waited until everything died died out, and then. That's when I started getting into the smart contract space. So those e the ETH Phoenix and Locked In, those have the highest uh, balance in terms of the uh, ETH that's invested in those contracts compared to the other contracts that kind of were going through that first wave of adoption. Now we've seen kind of the second wave and you're seeing Poo and Proof of Craig Grant uh, have come down quite a bit. Just two days ago, you know, Pooh was at 600 ETH in the contract. Uh, proof of Craig Grant was over 300. So now it's at, you know, under 300. So the Pooh contract's in half. It's been cut in half. And Proof of Craig Grant has really, um, really come out. So um, some of the things was like, I kind of wanted to mention is like, you can see here um, over the past few days, or at least like, these past three days, Proof of Craig Grant has been the most profitable for me. Like I made 0.15 ETH almost made like 0.1 ETH. That was actually about 0.1 when I pulled it out. And then here's another, you know, point, basically a 0.15. So I've made, you know, 0.35 ETH in, in just that contract in three days. However, uh, the, the, the balance that I have has gone way down. And so that's kind of the risk as you're getting into these smart contracts is that basically like, Pretty much everyone sells out which is you know this this contract went from like 300 now it's at 22 and so like i mean i've made more in dividends you know or almost i've almost made more in dividends than i actually have in coin balance now so like if i were to cash out my coin balance i'm at like 0.17 so when i first started this i put it in an eth and uh basically I just kind of um i reinvested for a little while to get my coin balance up and then and then started pulling out. So this, again, this is kind of a long-term play for me. I anticipate that the volume is gonna stay low in a lot of these clones. We may see a little bit uh, coming in, but I don't see these con 
the contracts really going away. I think that people got spooked a little bit with the second wave of clones. Um, same thing kind of with the first wave of clones and that kind of caused a lot of the sell-offs. But in terms of like the overall balance in these contracts, you know, we were over 8,000 in uh, the contract balance here in the 12th Ethereum that was in uh, these contracts that I'm monitoring. And so we saw it come down by like 500 in one day. It's come down by like basically another 200. And so like I'm anticipating a little bit of a, a bottoming out uh, before we see, before we see uh, uh, some things return. There's a couple of new projects that uh, could be interesting. So like right now, like I've been kind of just holding my, uh, um, my uh, the, the, the funds that I was gonna reinvest into some of these smart contracts and kind of waiting for a few different projects that I've been kind of like monitoring. Um, I'll show you guys that uh, here if I can get this uh, pulled up. Bear with me one sec. See if I can bring this up before I start kind of giving my take on um, uh, Bancor, which has kind of been like, I'm not finding it here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of kind of like what's been going on with uh, this Bancor. So this is now uh, number four. It says it's new. However, you know, this exchange has been around a little while. And so like, that's kind of one of the things I kind of wanted to show you guys. Like uh, I, I wasn't in really involved with this. I just got involved uh, this morning, just set up an account. When you set up an account, you're gonna basically come into a sign-in page and this is gonna wanna connect with Messenger, Telegram, or WeChat. So I selected WeChat because uh, for me, that's, I, I kind of like the security in that. I didn't really like, uh, like my, my channel's been getting like spammed like crazy by Telegram and a few other uh, companies and um, it's a little concerning for me. Kind of makes me, uh, you know, I, I, just, I just don't like that marketing tactic. So like I didn't really want to get in Telegram. Messenger is kind of more, uh, I don't really trust that platform. And WeChat is primarily used, at least here in Asia, is kind of like the platform is mainly used in China. So I went ahead, uh, I came in, and this is my, my wallet. So once you kind of set up and go through the verification process, like I, I had a little bit of ETH in there and I bought, um, I bought some, um, some BNT tokens, which is their native token. And you can see, um, I wanna show you guys a little bit of kind of like, uh, oops, there goes my battery. Sorry guys. Um, I'll show you guys uh, a little bit of like the, um, the history of this coin. So it's currently at about five bucks. It's been, it's up quite a bit today. This came around kind of mid July of last, mid June, July of last year. Uh, it was still kind of an early concept. So you kind of saw, it took a while for people to really kind of bring it into adoption. And then you saw like December, January is kind of where we saw a little bit of a increase in the volumes and prices leveled off again. And I, this is like this kind of next wave. So to me, like, especially with the volumes that we're seeing right here, um, when you're looking at the markets, like this is traded in a lot of other markets, Upbit, Bi uh, Binance, Bittrex, hit BTC. So it has quite a bit of uh, distribution. And when we're looking at uh, some of the exchanges that uh, this is being offered in, um, right now this Bancor, um, this exchange right here, the number one uh, coin that's being traded by far, 61% is in this Bancor. Uh, project. So uh, 8 million in trading, almost 9 million in trading in the last 24 hours. That's actually outpacing Ether Delta by quite a bit. You can see Ether Delta here at about 3, three million, um, but not quite uh, the levels of IDEX. So, uh, but you know, this is kind of one of the things I wanted to do. You can see like the volumes have kind of come down with, um, with this Holo project, which we bought into the other day and um, kind of getting into the coins is kind of where the action's at, where the volume's flowing. And I think those are gonna be uh, good plays at this point. And that's kind of, that's, that's kind of where I'm going right now. But as far as like today, kind of going through the smart contracts, show this to you guys again, you know, uh, I want to show you guys that this is, this is something that, um, you know, could, could be an option for you guys if you're, if you're interested in this. I've made 
you know, May 1st, I made 0.36 ETH. You know, the other day as volumes were down, I made 0.27 ETH. Today I've made, you know, 0.31 ETH. And so it uh, works out to uh, just a little over 200 bucks. Now the value that I've had in these different projects is kind of fluctuating, it's going down. Like that's when you have like a lot of people that are selling out, it's gonna bring the overall price of the token of that project that you're in, it's gonna bring it down. So like my holdings in some of these projects has gone down. And so like I've, I've lost money in terms of like, like for instance with Proof of Credit Grant, I put in an ETH and then I kind of reinvested for a while, but my initial investment was putting one ETH in. That's, that's all I did. And uh, I've been starting to pull out dividends. Now those have been some pretty profitable dividends as a lot of people have been selling out. Um, but it's only been three days. And I've made, you know, uh, basically, what is this? Uh, 0.4, basically about 0.4 ETH. About 0.4 ETH in three days. So I've almost got, you know, half of, of what I had back. Now, if, if uh, a little bit of volume returns to that contract, um, as we, maybe we get another wave of uh, people kind of getting into some of these smart contracts, then it gets to the point where I'm at a break even point with that contract and I can essentially just kind of ride it out and just collect dividends. And so that's kind of the goal and the idea behind these smart contracts is to get in at a good price point, get in kind of early with the plan of holding, the plan of not getting out. Now you don't necessarily want to get into a project that's dead. And that's kind of why I was interested in kind of showing you guys uh, two, two of the first projects, this ETH Phoenix and Locked In. These were two that really kind of died off. Like I haven't been making anything in these. But uh, my, my, the idea that I have is that as this kind of adoption, as we see balances, like overall ETH balances return to these smart contracts, we may see a little bit of diversification into proven projects that, that are at least, uh, if nothing else, sustaining the balance of the ETH that they have in those contracts. And so that's what I'm seeing as, um, you know, potentially a better play than something like, you know, um, like a, kind of a meme token like Proof of Credit Grant. Um, but I'm interested to kind of see how that goes. Like, I'm just going to leave it in, let it ride for, I guess, the whole month. You know, I don't see any reason why uh, to pull out at this point. Um, as people kind of pull out, there's a more of a distribution in terms of the payouts of, of, of those coins. But if there's really no volume, which is kind of what we're seeing, you know, it may be, it may be a long time before I kind of get to a break even point. Let me check them in the chat a little bit. You take a look at LATX. Let's take a look. Latium. So this is Latium. Let's take a look at the uh, charts here. It looks pretty new, like just came on March 23rd. It's being traded Yobit primarily, ETH to BTC. Take a look at their website. It's only a uh, two two point seven in their million uh, two point seven million in their market cap, so it's still um, still a relatively new new project. Crypto meets gig economy. Yeah, McAfee's on it, so they've got a big name associated with it, perhaps. Look into BETR on Bancor. BETR. I kind of like this this like converting aspect to uh, this exchange. So like, say we have some ETH. Um, like I want to put in, let's just say. 0.04, I'm pretty sure I got that in there. So if I wanna buy some uh, BETR coins and convert this, I'm gonna use my my Bancor um, account. Uh, I thought I was already connected. Ah, uh, crap. All right, so I'm gonna have to do that after the stream. It's, it's like, I don't know, the sign in things like, I like the security behind it. It's a little bit different than like some of the other exchanges, uh, but I can't do it while I'm live streaming right now. But uh, 
to see if that's offered on coin market cap at all. No, at least not yet. All right, I'll have to look into that one a little bit. I was trying to look for this one website. Let's see if I can find it. I thought this was interesting. I was kind of like, I was looking into this a little while ago, and this is like um, set to launch here pretty soon. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to bring this up. Sorry. I, was, I had something I was kind of working on, and uh, I couldn't get it to pull up. But anyways, like, I was, I was pretty encouraged just kind of looking through uh, DAP radar um, with kind of this new one that's come up. So it's kind of been a new thing I've been kind of monitoring is basically some of these ones that are coming up. Like, you know, this IDX has, has really surged in terms of its daily active users. Same thing with Fork Delta here. So uh, Bancor, even though it doesn't necessarily have the active user count, uh, it's trading quite a bit. It's not really reflected here. Um, or at least it doesn't seem to be reflected accurately. It's saying like three million here, where it's like eight million on coin market cap. So maybe there's something I'm missing. Um, the proof of hodling, you know, and then the proof of Craig Grant. Now, I mean, these coins are still in the top, you know, the top, uh, you know, 20. And uh, the daily active user counts at, between this and also proof of hodling is is a little bit encouraging that you might see volumes come back into those contracts a little bit. These contracts are here to stay, and so like. You know, I may be losing money in terms of like the overall amount, the value of what I have in these uh, contracts is going down. I always have the option to pull them out if I really need to uh, for for some reason, but um, but I don't need to. And so it actually is beneficial for me to try to just hold them in these contracts if I can. And if I believe else that, that we're going to balance is the ETH balance and in, in these uh, sustaining. Um, if we see uh, volume start to come back, whether, we, you know, you kind of see a little bit of volatility and that really might be all it, all uh, it would take for, uh, for me to kind of get to a break even point in these contracts where then you're, you're, you're essentially in the profit. Bab is on fire on Bancorp Network. There look like there's some interesting ones like this BETR. Like I can't, I can't. No, I'm okay. No, no, I'm fine. Um, then get your shoes shined here for like three dollars. But they try to get you like every time. Like if I'm not paying attention, they'll uh, they'll put insoles in there for like ten bucks that you didn't want. And the insoles, of course, are like way too small for me. Wow. Okay. It's like. You know you can um, you can hook this up to your MetaMask. Let me, let me, let's let's try that here. I want to see. So this Bab, uh, the way when I'm searching for this right here, if I'm looking at uh, B A B, it's uh, this B A B X, and they also have this like relay function, which I'm still like learning. This is kind of a whole another aspect to this uh, website. Uh, and something I, I probably need to um, uh, uh, educate myself a little bit about, but the relay function on on this exchange looks looks interesting. But anyways, we're gonna try to convert this. Let's try to use MetaMask. See if I can just um, do a little bit here. B A B X. Okay, so this this price slippage is kind of an interesting one. Like you can change this to like one percent. It's just kind of, it's like, uh, I guess, kind of locking it in at a certain price. But uh, when you're actually like buying something on here, so go next. Gas price. Changing gas price value will result in failed transaction. Proceed. It's 
saying it's going to be like four bucks the transaction fee. It's a pretty high transaction fee. Let's see if I can get some info on that. 7.9 GUI. See it processing there. Let's see if that goes through. Well, I guess you got to okay it through your. Uh... Yeah, you got to okay it through your uh, MetaMask. So I'm gonna bump this down. Like, I don't need that high a gas price. Even that seems kind of kind of steep. Let's go with that. transaction and process you can see it there so bought a little bit of that the idea is just kind of to you know put a little bit into some of these different coins on these uh, decentralized exchanges just kind of seeing how that how they go so I don't mind trying out a few different coins that uh, maybe have a little bit of potential Zebi on IDX looking good on for India. Ideas. Yeah, that one, um, it's doing a lot of volume. Here, so you can see like it's third right now. Cause like I've been interested in this Pundi X and this Matrix AI network. Uh, I was kind of going to their websites and I kind of like what they're doing. Same thing with the, the Aurora Deo coin is kind of like their native coin that you stake to receive like transaction fees from like posting that coin on the network. So I still want to get into that a little bit, but uh, let's take a look at Zebi. Currently 20 cents, geez, it's up 56% today, 57%. Just hit the market. Just hit it on May, May 1st. I don't know much about this exchange here, but it's doing quite a bit of volume. So, Let's take a look at their website. AI chain for hospitality industry. It's kind of how they're branding themselves live in production. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of interesting projects. Like just yesterday, I met with um, the CEO of this uh, PO8.io. So let me show this to you guys. And they're working on a really interesting project. You know, so it's like kind of like a very um, centered around like marine archaeology, like for the blockchain. Like they have uh, some some interesting uh, things they're doing. They were in uh, ICO phase, and they're kind of out here in Vietnam, or at least the CEO was out here. And uh, so, like, basically, they're they're positioning themselves as uh, the only the only company that has an exclusive contract with the Bahama government to actually do excavation work in that area. So there's a lot of uh, hot spots that are illegal to do like treasure hunting or like diving. And there's, there's known um, areas that are uh, hot spots for that type of thing that are in, I guess, Bohemian waters that are illegal to, uh, to do uh, diving for. And they've got a contract with the government. They're, they're getting uh, everything kind of uh, done correctly uh, with their kind of U.S regulatory aspect to their their company so like I sat down and kind of talked to them for several hours and um, you know it's kind of interesting like I was um, um, I'm interested to hear more you know talk talk a little bit more so I met with uh, uh, this uh, Matthew Arnett the CEO and so they've got a little bit of the team here you can see so look they were just kind of getting through their ICO phase so I'm gonna get some get some more information on that one. I'll probably do an update. Uh, kind of like what they're doing. It's kind of specific to like that geographical area. So I'm not really sure how it would be marketed in Vietnam, and that's kind of was my whole thing. It's like I don't know how many people in Vietnam are gonna be interested in like treasure excavation, like uh, coin tokenization that's kind of centered in the uh, Bahamas. But there's money that I'm sure some people will get interested.
you know Ripple has a smart contract running on the XRP ledger? It's called All War. I don't know anything about All War. Let's take a look. load here. Nice look to their website. Payment solutions. Yeah, I don't just, uh, okay, let's look at the decentralized exchange. I don't know how well you guys can kind of see that. There's a decentralized exchange, ALV. Uh, let's take a look at uh, coin market cap. Yeah, I'm not seeing it on here. So, yeah, I don't know much about it. Yeah. I mean, like, Bancor was another one. Like, there wasn't a whole lot on this one, but it's been around. Like, at least the coin's been around since the summer of last year. Uh, but the exchange, as far as the exchange, like it's so like I know that exchange has been functioning for a while, but it just recently got listed on on um, the DAP radar site, coming in at number four. But well, that's about all I got for today. So let me know if you guys have any more questions, things you want me to take a look at. Um, other than that, I'll catch you guys on the next one.